we present a modified technique for vitrectomy that we use for retinal detachment caused by retinal breaks in the upper two-thirds of the retina. The technique relies on minimal subretinal fluid drainage. Uh, this is a case of a 65-year-old gentleman with temporal macula off retinal detachment. PVD was present and there was a temporal horseshoe retinal break with associated retinal thinning. The patient was phagic. 25 gauge vitrectomy was undertaken. This is the start of the vitrectomy, removing the core vitreous, then focusing on the periphery, cutting the vitreous back towards the periphery. Uh, the patient is phagic, so we're uh, respecting the lens anatomy so as not to hit the lens uh, while crossing uh, to the other side. Now focusing on the superior retina and now to the side of the vitreous cutter. Here is the main um, break as you can see. And now vitreous removal is continued to remove the um, vitreous on the side of the cutter. Switching hands. Now vitreous removal on the other side. Again respecting the lens anatomy so as not to hit the back of the lens. And now moving up from the nasal uh, choker towards the temporal break. The main aim here is to remove all traction around the retinal tear and also to amputate the uh, flap of the tear to remove any uh, residual traction. Uh, after finishing the vitrectomy, this is the step of scleral indentation with uh, endolamination to look for retinal tears. One side of the retina is indented carefully searching for breaks. Here there's a break in attached retina at 6 o'clock. Uh, now switching hands and indenting the other side. This is the main break and no other breaks are otherwise found. This break is treated with cryopexy but also could be treated with laser. Now attention to the breaks in detached retina and the break is marked with diathermy to enhance visualization under air. In this technique, we only drain the subretinal fluid from existing retinal breaks. Here this is fluid fluid exchange followed by fluid air exchange, and this is uh, using active suction. Retinal fluid posterior to the retinal break is left, no drainage retinotomy is done, and we also do not drain the intravitreal fluid over the optic nerve head. The area of the break is dry. Um, we treated here the break with cryopexy. It could also be done with laser, uh, given that the break itself is dry. To compensate for the minimal drainage, we use a slightly expansile gas concentration ranging from about 30 to 50% SF6. In this case, we use 30% SF6. The patient is asked to remain uh, supine for two hours without any change in position. The patient then positions at night uh, according to the retinal break uh, if the break is below the uh, 3 to 9 o'clock position. The advantage of this technique is that it's simple, efficient, it avoids the use of any uh, peripheral carbon liquid as well as uh, drainage retinotomy. Uh, we believe it's associated with less risk of retinal displacement because similar to pneumatic retinopexy, uh, we depend on the RPE pump to pump the fluid out and there is minimal uh, use of uh, air or gas. We favor supine positioning after the surgery uh, as we feel it interferes minimally with retinal reposition. In contrast to positioning the patient head up or face down, which can lead to subretinal fluid migration and retinal displacement. This is the appearance of the eye one day after the surgery with about 50% gas fill. This is the appearance one week after the surgery with only minimal gas remaining and the retina is flat. And this is the autofluorescence one week after the surgery with no retinal displacement seen.